Want to know what a label tear is and how to fix it? Keep watching to find out. Firstly, let's talk about anatomy. The shoulder joint is made up of three bones, two of which, which are in this model here. So we've got the scapula or the shoulder blade, we've got the humerus or the arm bone here, and not in this model, but we have the clavicle or the collarbone at the front. And technically, the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint, but when we compare it to other joints, where the socket is quite deep and supportive for the ball going in, the shoulder joint is actually quite poor. So here we've got the GH or the glenoid humeral joint. And as you can see, there isn't a huge cup for this ball to go in. So what happens is we have the glenoid labrum or glenoid ligament, which comes around the glenoid and increases the cup size by up to 50%. Uh, and that really strengthens and reinforces the joint. So the glenoid labrum is made up of fibrocartilage, which makes it quite rubbery, but still supportive. So you can still be mobile through, through the shoulder, but still relatively strong. There are three types of label tear that we're gonna go through today. So there is the slap lesion, the superior label tear, anterior to posterior. So the whole top portion of the labrum is top from, torn from the front to the back. And it's important to note here that the long head of the biceps comes in and joins with the, the labrum. So this is really common in people in repetitive sports like throwing and swimming and things like that. We've also got a Bankart lesion, which is the inferior anterior portion of the labrum is torn. And this is more from uh, acute injuries. So car accidents, sudden tugs down, falling on outstretched hands, things like that. And there's also the much less common posterior or reverse Bankart lesion, which is the back portion of the labrum, which is torn. As you can imagine, tearing a labrum can be quite painful. It can restrict your range of motion. You can feel weak through that shoulder and you can have feelings of instability. You can also have clicking, popping, and sort of snapping sensations in through that shoulder. And if you think you may be suffering from a label tear, it's important to get assessed by a professional Professional. So with a labral tear and the feelings of instability, it's important that your exercise rehab involves exercises that re-stabilize and re-strengthen the shoulder now that you have a weakened cartilaginous support in through that shoulder. So we're going to go over a few exercises now, but it is important that you are assessed by a professional because with labral tears, you do have an increased chance of dislocation and I don't want you to be trying anything at home that can cause you any more, more harm. For these first two exercises, we're gonna be using a resistance band. And it's important that you start on the weaker side and then progress up as you're getting stronger. You can get these from your physio or osteo. Uh, and today we're we'll just be gonna be using the red, so the weakest. And we're going to grab the band and you're gonna tie it about sort of elbow to height, whatever you sort of have at home, whether it's a doorknob, knob, a pole, whatever you can. Um, and it's important with this that your elbow is gonna stay nice and tight to your side and you want to be nice and comfortable. It's again important with these exercises that you're not causing yourself pain. They should be within pain limits because we don't want to be uh, causing any further inflammation in through there. We're trying to activate the muscles around this shoulder joint. So we're going to be doing external rotation. So from here, our shoulder's going to go outways, nice and controlled on the way back to. So again, that elbow nice and tight to the body coming directly out to the side, so from side on, just like this. Torso nice and tall. And you can get up to three sets of 15 of this one. For the second exercise, we're gonna be doing a modified row, uh, and we're going to stand straight on to our band, and we're going to be pulling back and down. Ideally with this, you want your pole to be a little bit higher, but yeah, pulling up and down. So you don't want to be using your upper traps. You want to be pulling your shoulder blades together and down for this. And again, holding that contraction nice, nice and controlled on the way back and the way back in. So you should be feeling a good resistance all the way through this. And again, getting up to three sets of 15 of this. For this last exercise, I'm gonna jump up on the table, but ideally do it somewhere on the floor where you're close to the ground and you're not gonna fall a far distance. But jumping up 
and uh, assume a four point kneel position. So nice and comfortable. And what you're gonna do with this is just very lightly stabilizing through your injured shoulder. You're gonna lightly bring your other hand over and touching onto that uh, other hand. Nice and strong. Making sure you're not straining your neck with this. And as you're getting stronger, you can start to reach a bit further out. And you can even do it on both sides as well. And another progression up from this is you can bring your hand out and you can even bring back the opposite knee as well. So you're really focusing on being controlled and stable through that shoulder. Uh, and you're getting again up to three sets of 15 of the touches, nice and slow and controlled that whole time. That was a quick explanation and a few exercises to help with labral tears. I hope that helped guys and we'll see you soon.